Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the Gods of Jade and Shadow read through. This is video number three. We're going to be covering pages 200 to 334. And at the end, I will also talk about my thoughts on the book overall. So starting off with chapter 21, Martin arrives in Tierra Blanca and meets Annabelle uh, Zivalva. Zivalva explains that there will be a race between Martin and Cassiopeia through the nine levels of the Black Road to the Jade City in Zabalba. That is going to decide um, which god takes over Zabalba. So uh, Zavala will grant Martin knowledge of how to skip certain sections of the road and give him just uh, tips on how to go about uh, going on the road and not going off the road. Basically, Martin is learning the warp zones for uh, the Black Road. So in 22, uh, we have Cassiopeia and Hoon Kame arriving at Ushivo's residence. He is basically the goat guy. He is a Zavalva sorcerer, so he is a brother to the other sorcerer. And he can use fire magic and goat magic. <laughs> He and his associates trap Hoon Kame and Cassiopeia in a fire ring, but Hoon Kame makes it look like he disappeared uh, when the guard fell asleep. And the guard falls for it, and comes in, he's like, oh, where's he at? And then Hoon Kame appears. So that's, that's extremely tropey and a little bit silly, but whatever. After that, Cassiopeia and uh, Hoon Kame fight their sorcerer and wooden goats attack uh, Cassiopeia, but she holds her own, she's tough. And Hoon Kame kills U Shavo, but he says that uh, Fuku Kame will be able to resurrect him in the future. Hoon Kame now has his sweet jade necklace. So chapter 23, Hoon Kame is actually having doubts about how well he can fight so far away from the Yucatan and without his eye. This is the first time he really shows any type of insecurity uh, with himself. Cassiopeia and him almost give into their desires and kiss, but the future is so uncertain that they don't. Cassiopeia explains how she wants to be free and do what she wants and go where she wants. Fukukame in chapter 24 is going to use the fact that Cassiopeia has fallen for Hunukame and see if Hunikame will give up his godhood for her. In 25, Hunikame tells Cassiopeia that there will be no uh, future for them if he reigns in Zizalba uh, on the throne. So if he becomes the lord of Zabalba again, then she can't live in the world of death and he can't live in a world of the humans in life. So in 26, um, everything converges. Martin picks up Hoon Kame and Cassiopeia and takes them to Tierra Blanca. Tierra Blanca is a hotel with all the conveniences that you would ever want or need. It has all the glyphs of power and is the way that they can connect the underworld to the middle world, specifically with the death of Hoon Kame because his blood will be the last piece to the structure and that connection between the underworld and our world will be complete. And then Vukub Kame can come into our world and um, make people give sacrifices to him and become much more uh, powerful that way. So Cassiopeia questions how Hun Kame might have treated his brother when he was the Lord of Death. So she kind of is realizing that she kind of sees the side that Vukub Kame has and that they might actually have something in common, which was an interesting uh, reveal. In 27, Martin tries to talk Cassiopeia, uh, talk some sense into her. They talk about when she first came to live with their family. Martin wanted to like her, but his mother didn't want him playing with her at all. Uh, so Martin's actions is basically based off of how his family expected him to act. And that's kind of sad. 
Um, Cassio, or Vuku Kame speaks through Martin and tells Cassiopeia that Hunikame will forget her and that she should go home. Cassiopeia is really her own person and does what she wants and she has such strong will. Um, obviously she says no. <laughs> she is really someone uh, throughout this book that I've come to admire. Uh, just her strong will, her sense of determination, and her sense of right and wrong. I really have been impressed by her. Uh, 28, they have dinner with Annabelle Zavalva, and the rules of the contest are laid out. Whoever gets to the Jade City Zavalva first wins. Hukame and Cassiopeia have their last dance together. Um, in 29, Finally, Vukukame and Hunikame, the two brothers, meet at last. Vukukame offers them life after death. They would sacrifice themselves to him, uh, to Vukukame. In turn, he would then raise them back up so then that they could spend their lives as mortals together. So it's a very alluring offer because at this point they do want to be together. So. In chapter 30, which is probably my favorite chapter in the whole book, uh, Cassiopeia and Hunkame walk on the beach um, and also in the surf to get privacy away from Vukukame. Uh, Hunkame is ready to throw everything away for Cassiopeia, um, throw away his power, his lord of Zabalba, and become a mortal. But Cassiopeia just can't do it. All the people that will die from Vukukame coming into the world is just too much of a burden. And this is the point where I realize that Cassiopeia is the real hero of the story. Not only is she the one making the hard decisions, but she is the one that's actually doing the last test. Hunikame is kind of just along for the ride. And Cassiopeia has been the one that has been giving energy to Hunkame this whole time. So more about that after I finish here. Um, you know, she does what is right, she is not a coward. So in chapter 31, the contest begins. The black road is very random and things can attack or obstruct you at any time. At times there were, there were monkeys throwing rocks at Martin. There was a giant bat. Uh, blocking the way for Cassiopeia. There were snakes with two heads. It was just all kind of crazy. So, in chapter 32, Cassiopeia's resolve is causing her to overtake Martin. Uh, Vecu Kame actually tells Martin to kill Cassiopeia. So, in chapter 33, a great chapter as well, Martin tries to kill Cassiopeia, but in the last moment, he has mercy. Um, and instead pushes her off the path, off the black road. So Cassiopeia is basically lost at this point, but she keeps on going. She doesn't give up. In a last moment of desperation, it looks like she is going to cut her hand and basically forfeit to Vekukame, like getting rid of the splinter that's in her finger that Hunkame has connected her with. But instead, she actually sacrifices herself by cutting her own throat in sacrifice to Hunkame, which was very on, uh, no one saw that coming. <laughs> so that was a great reveal, a great tension build moment, and a sacrifice. So uh, 34, the great Cayman, uh, saw her sacrifice, and uh, she is basically now at the great tree at the end of the race and she beat Martin there because of this sacrifice. Uh, Hunkame is restored as the rightful lord. Vukukame uh, bows to him. Cassiopeia is brought from the dead and Hunkame and her say their goodbyes. Uh, she cannot stay there and he cannot go to the land of the living and it was just a, a great ending I thought. In the end, Cassiopeia ends up going on a road trip with Loray, the uh, demon. They're going to go to like New Orleans or maybe Quebec. And so my final thoughts on this story, I, I really liked that 
Cassiopeia, as the story went on, got more and more attention away from Hunkame. And it reminded me of... Uh, you know, there are some men that use women as emotional support and and put a lot of the burden on the woman and I think that was a metaphor in this story with the uh, like the splinter and he taking her life and she really did everything like she was the one that uh, stopped the seductress from getting uh uh, Hunkame, she's the one that helped kill the sorcerer. She was the one that lured the uh, that one guy. And she basically did everything. And she is the true hero of the story. And it might have taken me a little bit too long in this story to realize that. That her determination, her strong will, her ability to adapt, um, to always do the right thing is what made her a hero and I really appreciated that about this story and I thought it ended perfectly they had this moment in time but they were just going in two different directions and that happens to so many people all the time in real life and I thought that mirrored real life really well uh, I would definitely would love to see another book in this world with Cassiopeia maybe with like the raid just traveling around but Cassiopeia is definitely one of my favorite characters that I've read in a book recently so I really did enjoy this book there was a middle part that kind of walled and I think as it went on and Cassiopeia be became it was obvious that she was the real hero of the story and I really realized okay this is what Silvia Moreno Garcia was doing. I finally realized that, and that's when I everything clicked together, and I liked it quite a bit. Um, if I had to rate it, I'd give it probably like a four star around there. I didn't have any like emotional uh, like impact for me. Like I, I didn't get excited, overexcited, or I didn't cry or anything like that. So usually, things that are higher than a four star for me. I will have some type of physical or emotional uh, connection to the story. I just, I was missing that in this, but fantastic book, highly recommend it. Um, obviously, if you watch this, you probably read it too. So I hope you guys liked it as much as I did. In the comments below, let me know how you thought uh, the ending was, if you liked the book or not. And um, yeah, let me know if there's another book that you would want me to read through in the comments below. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.